unless we are out there protesting right in the streets we can either be killed by COVID-19 just as easily as we can be killed by a cop we cannot give up protesting because there's a virus And then they cut off communication. Once we cross the street, when y'all can hear, use our cell phones. Like it's the military, like we're at war. Go, go, go. All right, here you go. No justice! No, no justice! No peace! Prosecute the police! No justice! No peace! Prosecute no the police! So what we can do is we can make sure, we can take precautions to make sure people don't catch the virus. Are we handing out water, hand sanitizers? Is there fruit here? Are there masks? We're trying to get masks out, but we're like negotiating with like hospitals in other countries as well to get masks for protesters here as well, or scarves or other like, like covering other faces. We know what to do to lower the transmission of the disease without giving up one of the three tactics that we can do to make change in America, protest to organize and to vote. Let's not drop the protesting because it's going to be harder to organize and harder to win in November if we're not out in these streets protesting. Black people who are disproportionately sick and dying from um, COVID-19 are still, are still, there's, are still willing to put their bodies on the line and risk sickness to protest injustice, to protest anti-blackness in this country. Black people are sort of the miners canary of American democracy, right? Um, the, the miners used to take a canary into the coal mine to because their lungs are smaller to try to warn them when there were toxic gases in the mines they needed to get out. And so black people are metaphorically the miners canary of our democracy, of warning there is something wrong, something structurally wrong with our democracy and how we treat and dehumanize particularly black people and others. We have a president of the United States that's out there calling us thugs, that's out there calling when she, once the looting starts, the shooting starts. So there's a level of anxiety and stress on top of already being black, already being scared, already having the higher chances of catching COVID. But all that stuff is added up and we get the most powerful person in the country calling me a thug. The world sees Minneapolis as this liberal utopian, land of lakes, um, like Prince and like that, that, that. But if you scratch just a little bit under the surface, just a little bit under the surface, you see deep racial divides. We have this hamster wheel in America <laughs> where like black folks get killed, we get distracted, we go back to normal, another black guy gets killed. We just keep doing it. We've been doing this since King, we've been doing this since Ferguson, we've been doing this Philando Castile, we've been doing it uh, Jamar Clark. When are we gonna get off this hamster wheel? What we actually need is for a, us to stop this cycle and fix the problem. What's your name? 